Hey, it's Jerem. How are you doing, man? Good, dude. This is one of the awesomest, coolest people, and he was on American Idol. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and what, what did Katy Perry say? Because she gave you a yes, right? Yeah, dude. She's like, yes, but only because you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> And then and in her tweet, she said, what did she say? She's like, from weir oh, one weirdo, one weirdo to, another, to another, I see you. Yeah. I see you, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. So, that Katy Perry announcing that she's like, she sees you. She's like, stalking <laughs> you or something. She's like, I see you. <laughs> yeah, dog. No, um, that's cool. All right, so, Jerem, you are a musician, and you're also a thinker. You're like kind of a philosopher. You like to... But you're also pretty humble about it, though, right? Like, you, you like to argue, but you're also willing... You're one of those few rare people that's willing to kind of, like, admit when... Or, or let, let someone change your mind, right? Like, you're not... I hope... I mean, I hope so. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know if I... It's kind of that line of, a, like, strongly believing your beliefs or just versus just being, like, stubborn, you know? Mm -hmm. And that... And, you're open to, you're receptive to new information and new ideas. I, I hope I am, yeah. At yeah. least hope so. Yeah. Okay, um, how old were you when you first got into music? Oh, uh, um, yeah, I think the answer is, uh, yeah, since it's always, since just the beginning. Always. Yeah. Just so, kind of like Charles, like, when, as soon as, while you were still in the room, or yeah, something just like, you just like did did your parents listen to very much music as you were growing up? Yeah, all the time. I think that's kind of I think that's probably what got me into it is my um uh my parents huge into music. Um my uh like my mom really liked like the carpenters. Um and then my dad was a huge fan of like the Beatles and James Taylor. Mm -hmm. Um and like we're most kids were having bedtime stories read to them. I was having my dad play me Beatles songs on his guitar, so very cool. That was, I think there's like a, a, uh, I don't know, like an emo uh, emotional or like a biological kind of attachment to it. Well, and you have a very interesting voice though, don't you? Like it's very unique and very like... Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> do you want, well, do you, do, do you want to sing anything with that? Just kind of acapella? <laughs> sing. Sing uh, Hey, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Sing a madman. Ooh. Oh. Well, how's that going? Cause I'm a madman. Oh. Yeah. Hey, finish the line. Nice line. voice. Yeah, yeah. Finish the line. Do you, oh, do you remember how it goes? Um, that's it. Yeah, that, that's it. That's the line, right? That's the that line. Bars. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, okay, so you've got your own kind of style. Have you, how did you arrive at that? Did you, was it through experimentation or was it just always just like the Jerem style? Just did I, it evolve from anything? Yeah, I think it did. I think everyone's style evolves from stuff, just what they listen to and just the uh, the emotions they have and their just their inner personalities. And yeah. That, yeah. Very cool. So. Um, You've been involved with like different like bands and um, you've written some some songs that have been a lot of fun. What what are some of your favorite songs that you've written? Ooh. Um. You had one one concert of yours I went to was just called you know it was Diet Coke right you yeah. just released Diet Coke which was a fun one. Diet Coke was a fun one. Diet Coke was an interesting one because it was like. Um, I didn't think it was going to be like as popular as it was. It was just um, in in my old band, uh, Liddy Sife, we had Dallin Hunt. He uh, had the chords for Diet Coke, and then I wrote the melody and the lyrics in my car, um, driving to his house, and then we just like took a couple like notes on our phones of just like this is the chorus, this is the verse, and pretty much the song was done, and then. Uh, yeah, I thought it was just like a f fun, it was like a fine song, it was, it was fun, but nothing too special about it, and I guess people 
have enjoyed it. So well, some sometimes the best things like, for example, stories, right? If someone sits down and writes a story and they try to, in their mind, they're thinking, okay, I need to have all the elements. I need to write it out so it has, you know, I need to include some humor. I need to include some action. I need to include some, yeah. you know, some romance and adventure and blah, blah, blah. Then a lot of times that's not going to flow as naturally as if, if you just sit there and you just like do something in life, just sort of a metaphor for life, right? Like do something just kind of spontaneous and unscripted. A lot of times, that's where some of the some of the best things come from, right? Is instead of trying to piece it together with your left brain, if you just let your right brain just flow, it's gonna. I mean, because that's how we do our dreams, right? We don't we don't just plan them out in advance, right? They, they just happen. Like your brain spontaneously comes up with some of the best stuff, and then you wake up in the middle of the dream, you're like, no, I want to see how that. <laughs> I want to continue yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because your brain has. It, it seems like there's so much activity going on there but anyway that's 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 me preaching about the brain. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think it's actually I think it's a little bit of both um yeah. i think uh mu music is a all like a language mm -hmm. um we have to like understand uh like the left brain side of it you have to understand how to how chords work and you know how to actually play your instruments and stuff right. you have to know like the techniques of how to write a song but then at the same time it's like this um, you have to understand, so, how do, how do I say it, um, it's almost like something that comes to you, like, you can't always force it, um, but then you have to know how to understand it, you have to know the language when it speaks to you, I don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense, but. Yeah, it's kind of like playing basketball or something, right, where you need to know how to dribble, you need to know, like, some of the techniques and stuff, but once you have those down, then you can use those in your own way. Like you can, like people can take them and make them their own, and yeah, and then from there they can just be creative. And they, they, as they're playing basketball, they're not thinking about dribbling, right? They're just um, like you look at an NBA star or something, right? They're not thinking about each. It, it just yeah. that, that's part of the repertoire. That's part of what they can use, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like um, like um, you, you, you can know how to dribble the ball and all that stuff, but you need someone to pass the ball to you before you can even do any of that. True. Um, and the, the passing of the ball in, in music is, is kind of like the, the different melodies and stuff that occur to you in your head. Yeah. Right, or like if I want to write a, like, I have an idea that I want to write a song about, like, uh, my sister moving to Texas or something. Yeah. Um, and I kind of have, like, like, thoughts about how I, like, the type of song I want to write. Yeah. Um, I have to know how, like, the techniques of how to write that in order for that to. But also at the same time, I have to have those like, um, the so the knowledge of how to write the song, but then the the thoughts and the uh, um, the inspiration to start the song. So what inspires you, Jerem, to write? Like, what what is that spark, that inspiration? Sometimes, like. A, do you have any examples, like a song you've written where, can you remember like what led up to you writing one of your songs? Like, be, like um, bef before you even gave the song itself thought, like what, like what caused that to like evolve? I, I don't know, I think it's kind of interesting. It's like, um, I, I assume a lot of songwriters have the same uh, thing that happens where like you have thoughts, um, yeah, like your normal like language thoughts, like it's like someone talking in your head, right? Um, but then you also have like your music thoughts. So like you'll think of a situation, like a like a, a nice date you had or something, mm -hmm. and um, you associate that with like different melodies and um, and lyrics and stuff. So um, I guess an example of that would be a song I wrote called Magic, um, mm -hmm. and that was I wrote that right off of a of a fun little cute date I had yeah. um, and yeah I just had that like the kind of the chords and the melody kind of would you running be, around would you be willing to sing a little bit of that because that was a fun song <laughs> I remember that uh, yeah it's like a I caught her eyes that night it hit my heart so right and now she looked this way Oh, I melted away, and how'd she do it? How'd she do it? 
and the cool little chord comes. It must be magic, voodoo or witchcraft somehow. <laughs> yeah. Voodoo or witchcraft. Yeah. It has to be one or the other, right? Can't be. <laughs> No, I'm yeah, just right. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, just, or or just sounds better. <laughs> I I remember when that song came out. Like yeah, like that was a lot of people were sharing that on Facebook and stuff, and it was pretty uh, pretty popular. A lot of people you got a lot of compliments on that, right? As oh, I recall, I like it. It was, it was a minute ago. It's been a minute. Mm-hmm. It's been a little while. Um, okay, so aside from music. Um, I know, so, like, you, you, you do like to, uh, you, you have a real intellectual side, in my opinion. You like to think about things that a lot of people don't think about. And we don't need to get into, like, any of the, like, you know, debating type type issues or whatever. But has that side of you always been active, like, as a child as well? Um, I don't know. Maybe, like, the, the seeds of it. But I don't think it really started, I really started getting into um philosophy and stuff um until um the two biggest things that got me into it was um my uh deconversion from religion and conversion into like agnostic atheism uh-huh. um and then my uh, i guess introduction and transition to veganism were the two things that got me into and what I like about your approach is that you seem genuinely curious in like what like when an idea has convinced you of something it's like putting myself in your shoes when you when you write about it it's like you're pleading with people to say what is your response to this <laughs> right it's like, it's like yeah. I want to hear why this doesn't convince you like it convinces me right is that mm-hmm. is that kind of similar to like what goes on in your mind on some level kind of like you like you, yeah. you want to know why people don't feel the same way because it just it seems it seems obvious to you but you're you're open to at the same time to being like okay if i'm wrong explain please <laughs> yeah yeah i know like um absolutely a lot of my hard held beliefs were i believe because i spent so many times or so much time trying to like um what's the word i'm looking for what? I don't know. Um, prove them wrong, prove them false. Uh-huh. Right? So, like, when I went vegan, I was, like, working at Chick-fil-A and, you know, eating cheeseburgers and you had a having vested, steaks. You had a vested interest in veganism being wrong. Yeah. Morally. Yeah. Right? Like, so you were looking for every possible excuse you could find to to not be vegan. Mm-hmm. But through no, through no, um, I don't want to say fault, but through... You had no choice. You were you were assimilated, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You were you were drawn in. You were taken in. You you had to become vegan if you wanted to be intellectually honest with yourself, right? From mm-hmm. from your perspective. Yeah, from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it it is largely like when I talk about stuff, it's like, yeah, prove it wrong, and I have, you know, my hard held beliefs that I have, I've yet to hear someone prove mm-hmm. my beliefs wrong. And that's why I hold them so strongly. And um, Dr. Avi, I think, is similar to that because he himself was like converted to veganism. And and by the way, okay, so I'm not I'm not vegan just for those listening, but I have to admit that they do have some pretty good ethical moral arguments. And so it's hard to yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've I just had to, to as I've talked with Jeremy about it, I've had to say, okay, you know, I concede, and you know, I'm trying to work my way a little bit in that direction for like ethical as well as health reasons. But at the same time, it's uh, it's also kind of kind of difficult. But but yeah, d- going back to Dr. Avi though, he's super smart and he's always he's similar to you in that he's he's always open to hearing what someone else has to say, right? Like in genuinely considering it. So hey, just, like like, just shout, no, shout out yeah, to yeah, Avi. Dr. Cool. <laughs> shout out to Dr. Avi, and he was converted to it by a guy. Ask yourself. Um, I forget what his his actual name is, but uh, his name's Isaac. Uh, I don't Brown? know. His, Isaac's what's his last name? I think it's Brown. I, Isaac something. Yeah, he's. I a, think it's he's Isaac. A, he's an interesting guy as well. Yeah. He he uh, is, I mean, I I I think he he essentially invented the greatest vegan argument, the uh, name betray. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Just essentially, you know what 
name the trait of a of a cow that if applied to a human would justify um, slaughtering the human the same way we slaughter cows. Or no, no one has really come up with a good response to that argument, mm. and I think even I think they even presented it to um, to Noam Chomsky, and he just kind of dodged it. <laughs> yeah, they've presented it to a couple of people. Um, I think Noam Chomsky, um, the the biggest dodge I thought was Sam Harris, which is really really interesting because Sam Harris used to be vegetarian. Yeah. Um, he presented to Sam Harris, and Sam Harris I think is one of the greatest intellectuals of our time. I, I really appreciate him, but. Yeah, his his response was very just. Uh, he didn't know what he was saying, and he was kind of just dancing all around and kind of trying to avoid the avoid the question. And I think that it's a common thing that happens with veganism because um, I think I think uh, in, in order for them to concede, they you know they might have to change their their habits, and habits are engraved. I think Sam Harris is intellectually honest, but at the same time, it seems like people, no matter who, who they are, they have sort of a reluctance to concede or to give up ground because they feel like, like once they do that, then it's like the slippery slope to like, you know, <laughs> to yeah. having to change their position. So they'll, they'll do anything that they can to just go really, really slow, even if they're intellectually honest, right? Like, like really slow and reluctant and to, just like holding on to the to the edge of the cliff so to speak just kind of like okay I know where I'm at right now I'm safe but if I move my hand then I don't know I just might slide down the cliff right yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. it's also understandable. positions are also like part of uh, personhood right like because because positions affect your uh, your habits and your like everyday choices and um, Right, like if you're a, if you have a, it's a tradition of you know, getting a, burgers with your, dad on every Wednesday or whatever, and then you're convinced of like veganism, you you might have to give that up, you know, like yeah. it's a, it's not as easy as just changing your, or being convinced by some view, you have to change your lifestyle too. And if you're doing it for like ethical reasons, then you have to. Be kind of strict right like if someone offers you a piece of cake you might be oh well they might have a little bit of milk or egg in yeah. it or something right mm -hmm. and then you yeah which is where when, when i when i tried being kind of vegan like it was really hard for me to to think okay that's one more thing to worry about is any time that i go and i get like some like anything right you have to worry about okay does this have some ingredient in it some mm -hmm. little bit of something and then where do you draw the line you know because once you once you say okay well it was cooked on the same it was cooked in the same pan that someone cooked a steak in uh, like earlier so, so can I not have it or you know what I mean yeah like, there's even gray area, gray areas with like non vegan or with like a uh, inher inherently vegan things right like a like palm oil like there's palm oil isn't an animal product but like it uh there's a lot of like forest a uh, deforestation and like um, you're hurt, hurting a lot of like uh, uh, monkey like habitats and stuff like that. So it's like there's a lot of gray areas, and you have to kind of like um, figure that figure that stuff out, you know, on your own. But yeah, have you thought about writing a song about like animals and your love for like <laughs> I don't know, just treating them well and stuff? That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, I, yeah, I've never really done that. I, I think that'd be sick. Um, that could yeah, yeah that yeah. could blow up in the vegan community, man. You get, yeah, you dude. Know your audience, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> send that out there and just be like, because they need a theme song, right? That's what the vegan community is missing. Is they're missing a theme song, and you could be the one. Yeah, you could be. Or I just turned into the vegan teacher. The vegan. Um, yeah. yeah. TikTok. Yeah, just like. Well, but you know what? Um, something like when it comes to morals and ethics and that kind of stuff, a lot of that does have to do with like feelings you know so maybe your music could actually reach people on that level i mean it would be hard to write a song like that but i don't know it's, i'm just throwing that out there just an idea that I just barely came up with on the spot but but yeah like sometimes people do understand better your, a message in music yeah right. it could be fun yeah. i i'm kind of um thinking of this i don't know why i just brought this up but um was it paul mccartney or um, 
someone had like written this like beautiful love song and everyone thought it was about some girl and it turns out it was just about his dog oh so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome the music yeah they could yeah write some some uh, song that connects with a lot of people and then come to find out it's, it's about veganism or mm -hmm. something like that yeah yeah okay jerem um is there anything else that people should really know about you um before we wrap it up uh, i don't know music's fun um i like like music um, well, what's the best way to, to get a hold of you just look up jerem eubanks yeah look up uh jerem eubanks or um at liddy Sife or so L I T Y L I T Y C I F E. C oh, oh, yeah, hey, City Life. Hey, tell tell them how it got that name because it's it's the reverse of. City yeah, it's life. the re reverse of City Life. Um, just switch the C and the L. Mm -hmm. Liddy Sife. Get Liddy Sife. Yep. All right, Jeremy. Hey, it's great seeing you as always, brother. And um, was there anything else that you wanted to say? Um, much love. Much love. All right. Peace out. Love peace, you, brother. Peace. Peace.